Hi folks, your uh, Uncle Dave's here. Time to commit an electricity. So, disclaimer, I know nothing about electricals and nothing about motors, and I am especially know nothing about winding of motors, uh, but I thought we'd do an interesting thought experiment here. How does this guy work? This is a tool motor, came out of uh, my worm gear circular saw. Uh, we've got uh, some bits and pieces. I took uh, disconnected this guy from the trigger housing the switch uh, Ground wire to the case AC power goes in AC power comes out the top of this switch at these two screw terminals and goes in here um, Well before we ask how does the motor work? We're gonna look at where does the electrons go? Uh, so I got one guy, comes in here, goes into this tape. I'm not gonna tear it up because you can see on the other side how that tape works, but they've just connected this sleeving ends in this uh, uh, insulated magnet wire it, so that the, the different wraps do not contact each other. They do not short out, hopefully. Um, so electron goes down this way, uh, goes into a coil, goes around a whole bunch of times, and then what? Well, it comes out this guy. This guy makes the jump over to the motor housing. Uh, this brass in the back you see there would have a carbon brush. Looks like this. Rides inside the brass, making contact here on the motor. So, electrons go in the wire, through the switch, through a coil, into the motor through a carbon brush, the 180 degrees opposite side comes out of the motor winding through another coil, makes the hop back across over to here and out the other wire back into the wall. Now, we're not gonna discuss uh, what makes it AC or DC right this second. So, what does all that accomplish? Well, motors work on electromagnetism. All this electricity flowing here, here, and in here creates a magnetic field. So, we get a magnetic field in this guy, which travels over to this guy, into one of these, through some coils in here, which you can see the ends of sticking out, um, which creates a, a, well, it's same, same polarity opposing Think back to your uh, your high school physics class when you didn't talk about this one at all. The magnetic field here opposes the magnetic field of this guy, and you get a physical push. You get a force. Now, this guy over here uh, accomplishes approximately the same thing. So, current flow, we have, say, a, a north to south pole or a south to north pole, if you want to imagine a physical magnet. And then this guy, sitting inside here, like this, he's got the opposing direction. So north to north, south to south, they repel. Well, if that was exactly true, 180 degrees opposing, which way would this turn? The answer is, whichever way it happened to drift first, whether it was, uh, you know, one electron going the wrong way or, or, or whatever, any kind of imbalance, misalignment, whatever, would kick the motor off in that direction. So we can't have that. So actually what you'll see here, look at each of these copper contacts and the associated pair of wires. And electricity going in here, I don't know exactly which wire it's going to, but it's going up. And so let's say this one, electricity going into one of these is ending up uh, I'm going to eyeball and say something like 30 degrees or so. Uh, it's it's going to create a misalignment. So our magnetic field here is going this way. Our magnetic field in the other coil is going that way. And so our push is always going to be consistently in one direction. As this thing turns, the carbon slides over the contacts. And so every time we hit a new contact, instead of our field drifting with the motor, it's jumping, jumping from contact to contact along the way so that it maintains 
approximately within some number of degrees, because this isn't 100% continuous, within some number of degrees, it maintains the same field uh, difference, the same angular difference. So that's all fine and dandy. Um, so I had some, some other thoughts to analyze this. So uh, common multimeter. Uh, remember, kids, get the cheapest multimeter you can afford because you're going to burn it out while you learn. Um, so I want to see what the resistance of this is. No power, nothing's connected, no, no other circuits are involved, no batteries. Uh, those are all great ways to fry a multimeter if you try to measure resistance with any kind of power. Um, so I'm going in through one of the input wires. I'm going to come, uh, if, if you believe what I've told you, it goes through here. All right, so we go through this coil and out this guy. We've got half an ohm, or 0.4 ohms, 0.3 ohms. Well, I don't know if we want to trust this multimeter, but generally it's, it's going to read close, maybe not exactly, and probably at or above the actual value because this is not a clean connection. There's leads, you know, have their own resistance. So let's say 0.4. I like 0.4. Now, if you also believe what I've told you, this guy makes a jump to the other side through this wire. You can see him right there. So uh, I could be a terrible liar. You never know. All right, so eh, about the same, 0 0.5, 0 0.4. All right, so um, we know it's going to go through both of these after it goes through the motor. So we're up to about 0.8 to 1 ohm of resistance. Um, so we need to make... A measurement, I'll try to do this without any trickery where you can see it, across the motor on opposite sides. So I'm touching this guy, I'm touching, all right, got to fix the screen here. I may just have to call out the numbers or you'll have to trust that I got it right. Uh, if I can hold it on the right ones, I don't want to touch two. 0.5 to 0.6 point it's holding at 0.5 okay so we got about a half an ohm plus a half an ohm plus a half an ohm 1.5 uh, but anywhere from let's say 1.2 if they're all 0.4 to 1.8 ohms eh, I'm gonna say it's about 1.5 we got 120 volts out of the wall 120 volts remember ohms law volts equals amps times ohms uh, your your electromotive force equals your current times your resistance. All right, so, well, working backwards, we divide by the resistance, we get the amperage. Um, so 120 volts divided by 1.5, 80 amps? Is that is that for real?